Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Macros are one of my absolute favorite features in Studio One and are what got me to Studio One in the first place because I wanted to get faster at editing by reducing the amount of redundancies in my workflow. And that's the kind of thinking that I want to you know, kind of communicate to you today to get you into the way of thinking that you can start creating your own macros because every macro that you add to your Studio One workflow is going to be completely transformative to your workflow. It's going to reduce the amount of keystrokes and mouse clicks by a ton and that can really be an inspiring experience. So what do I mean by redundancy in workflows to begin with? I mean repetitive commands that you don't really need to press or click because they could all be summarized in just one command instead. I want to give you three very simple examples today for redundancies that you might have in your workflow without actually realizing it and getting rid of these with a few macros that we're going to create together. And I hope you're going to get creative from there and think about your own redundancies and come up with your own macro solutions. So the first example today that I have for you is consolidate track edits. So on this track right here, I've done a lot of editing, as you can see, and I'm happy with the transitions between the events. There's no audible clicks and pops anymore. So I'd like to consolidate that on the timeline so that I don't move anything by accident and can go over to the next stage of the production process. And that seems easy enough, but it already requires two steps that could be summarized in just one step. Let me show you. I would, first of all, select all events on the track. You can do that with Shift, Command and A on Mac or Shift, Control and A on Windows, like so. And then I would have to bounce and that is Command and B on Mac or Control and B on Windows. That were like one, two, three, four, five keystrokes. And I'm gonna show you how I could summarize that into just one keystroke in a moment. And that seems like an incredibly pedantic argument, but when you consider that you could do this with multiple commands in Studio One that you use on a daily basis, then suddenly you realize, wow, I could actually reduce the amount of mouse button presses and keystrokes by up to 50%, which is crazy, right? So this little incremental improvement over time can really go a long way. That's how I'd like you to think about it. Okay, so how do we do this? How can we consolidate this into just one command? Well, we go up here to Studio One and to the Macro Organizer. And then here in the Macro Organizer, we click on New. And now all that we need to do is find the two commands that we just triggered. And if we're not sure what they're called, we just know the key bindings, we can actually just go and expand that Macro Organizer here and double click anywhere in the shortcut field that opens up the keyboard shortcuts inside of the Studio One preferences. And I can search for the keys that I just pressed by clicking enter key. And when I now press this combination, it's gonna show me the name, right? So that's a pretty handy way of finding out the names of these commands. With that said, we just go back to the macro organizer, we click new, and we add select all on tracks, because that's what we did with shift command and A or shift control and A on Windows. And then we just wanna bounce, right? And we can actually specify, indicated by this argument here that says snap, whether we want to snap to grid or not. And I'd like to not snap to grid necessarily, so I'm gonna add a zero here. Zero means no snapping and one would mean snapping. And if it's off, then it's depending on your current snap setting, right? So um, in my case, I probably never wanna snap. So I just hit zero here and I call this consolidate track edits, because that's literally what I'm using it for. Then I hit OK, and now I can search consolidate track edits right here. And I've already assigned this to a shortcut, as you can see, which is zero. That's just one keystroke, and before I needed five. And now all I need to do is just select the track just like before and hit zero. That's it. Five keystrokes just turned into one keystroke. And that's just one example. Let's look at another one. If I scroll just a little bit further down this song project here, I find 
a track with just one muted event that I'm actually not using anymore. And there's a couple of plugins on here too, which don't do anything. So it doesn't make a ton of sense to keep this track around. And what I'd usually do, especially if this was like a virtual instrument, which might still require some CPU in the background, I would right click this track and then first of all, deactivate it by disabling track. And after I've done that, I would then right click again and hide the track. So that's like four mouse clicks in total. And why would I do that if I can just consolidate all of that in one command? You probably already see where I'm going with this. Once again, we go to our trusted macro organizer and we click on new. And now we just search the two commands that we just entered in succession. The first one was disable track, right? So we just double click that. Once again, notice the argument disable. This indicates that we can double click this command once it's added to a macro. And here we can again enter zero, one or nothing. If we enter nothing, this is like a toggle behavior. So if the track is already disabled, this would enable it, can be quite useful. Or zero would always be just disable and one would be always enable. So in my case, I probably just leave that blank right? Because I'm mostly using that on enable tracks anyway, which would always be disabled then. And the second command was hide, right? Hide tracks. And um, we find that here under the track chapter, double click that to add it. And now we can just call this deactivate and hide track like so. Hit OK. And now as soon as I search it in the macro organizer, I find it. And as you can see, I already have a new keyboard shortcut assigned. In this case, it's shift option and X. But if you use this a lot, then I would actually encourage you to use a more easy key binding, maybe something like, I don't know, uh, J or K or L, uh, anything on your keyboard, even if it's already assigned to something, if you're not using that and you're using deactivate and hide track more, then assign it anyway, because the most used commands should always be on the most accessible and easy to reach keys on your keyboard. I have an entire episode on keyboard ergonomics coming up. Please subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. But in my case, it's just shift option and X for now. And now I can just select the track that I had to right click twice before. And now I just do this and it's gone and disabled and the plugins don't need any more CPU from now on. And of course, I can always recall that by simply showing the track again, and then I can actually hit the same command. And you can see now the inside effects are enabled again. The final macro I want to show you today to reduce redundancies and increase efficiency in your Studio One workflow is a bit of a different one. You probably know that tracks can be expanded and folded in various ways in Studio One. For example, we have this tiny waveform button here to show and hide automation envelopes. We can also do that for all tracks by hitting A on the keyboard. And we also have this little icon here that's indicating layers containing takes on tracks, right? So that's two different buttons that we have to press if we want to show different levels of the track or hide them. And similarly, if we right click, we see these are also separate commands. So if I want to show or hide the envelopes, I have to untick that. And if I want to hide the layers, I untick that. And that's like a lot of clicks just to hide a couple of track layers. Instead, we could go to the macro organizer once again, click on new and just add these two commands into a macro because the macro will always trigger them either both at once or just the one that's applicable. And that's really playing to our advantage here. Watch. So we just search expand and we find envelopes and layers. We can just add both with a double click just like that and call that show hide track levels or anything that we want and hit OK. And now I can just search for that name. So hide, there it is. Double click shortcut to assign something. And in my case, I'm just going to go for H. This is already assigned to next parameter, but I'm not using that much. So I'm not scared to reassign it. Hit apply. Okay. And now I can always show and hide the layers on a track, no matter if it's just automation, right? Or if it's a layer or anything in between. This always works, right? On this track, for example, there's no layers. So the macro is just 
triggering the sec command instead, which is automation envelope show height. So this is really intelligent or rather not intelligent because it just ignores the other command, but it works really great as you can see. And you could also do that with transforming because transform instrument tracks and transform audio tracks is two separate commands in Studio One. If you consolidate that into a macro, you can always use the same keyboard shortcut for that. The possibilities are endless. I'm sure if you spend a little bit of time to reflect on your redundancies in your workflow, you will find them and you can solve them then with this technique that I'm showing you today. Thank you for watching.